All right, we are in lesson three, and I've gone ahead and started up my local dev terminal with just npm run dev, and we've got the site running over here. Now, last time we just added everything we need to kind of template out where this custom site settings section is going to be. Let's go ahead then and start working on the toggles, and you'll see them right down this way. We're going to leave the CSS until later in the series, so that way we can just focus on functionality right now. So let me go ahead and come over here. I'm going to open up my index.html file. We'll scroll down here, and it's within this first stack right here where we want to add these settings. We're going to leave the sound until later, and right now focus on this motion and the squared setting. So each of these switches we're going to put inside of a div with a class of switch uh, wrapper. Now the reason we're doing this is because we're actually going to kind of remove the default switch when we get around to it in CSS. And this entire section here is actually going to be position absolute based on this switch wrapper. So if that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. When we get around to the HTML, hopefully it will. We're going to have an input inside of each of these. And these inputs will both be types of check boxes. Then this needs an ID, and we'll just name it whatever it is. So we'll start first of all with motion, and then I will give it a name, and this will also be motion. All right, so this is my input. If I save it and come back over this way, you'll see now I've got this right here. Now I don't yet know what it does, so what I need to do next is come over here and say label, and this needs to say motion. This will point to this ID right here, so this connects these two. And we'll name this something like toggle motion. So let me go ahead and save that. You see now I've got toggle motion. So this would be on, and this would be off. Now, if I come back over to the finished code, you're gonna see here that I've got motion off and motion on. We're gonna add this later when we get to the CSS, but for now, just know that there is an actual label here called toggle motion with the checkbox below kind of all this front UI that looks this way, but really behind the scenes, this is what's controlling everything. So that's what we're gonna focus on for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab all of this. If I hold down Option Shift and the down arrow, it will actually copy all of this down below. And now we're gonna just switch out all these. So I'm gonna grab motion, and hit Command D, Command D, and Command D to grab all of those. Now we're going to change all of these to round. And I'll go ahead and save it. And you might notice that mine preserved the casing here for round. That's just because I have an extension called text cursor case preserve or something like that. Let's let's check it out. So if I jump back over this way, uh, case something, multiple cursor case preserve. That's the one I've been using. Okay, so it just kept this. Otherwise, you can come in here and capitalize that. So now we've got two options. We've got toggle motion and we've got toggle round. Now, importantly, because we've linked this to this and this to this, when you click on the label, it also checks the checkbox. All right, so that's the basic of the HTML. Now, how are we gonna actually handle this in real life? Well, for that, I wanna jump over to a little diagram that I created to hopefully help with this. So if I jump over here, you're gonna see that what we've got is we're gonna have a bunch of things pointing to a variable in our CSS. So maybe like it's a color, like blue. So all these blue things point to the variable of blue. Well, all we have to do to change it then is remove that or change it to something else. So if we change the variable to red, then all of these would take on that red hue. So that's how it's going to work. We're gonna point everything to a variable, then we'll just toggle the variable one way or the other. So if I come down below here, this is how it's actually gonna work in practice. So whenever I look at this, this will be kind of the things we do. First of all, we're going to listen to the change. So if I jump down here, whenever we hear a change here, if it goes from blue to red or red to blue, then secondly, we're going to update the UI. Now we're going to do that by actually updating a property on or an attribute on the HTML. So you can update it on anything, but in this case, because it'll be for the whole site, I'm just going to do it on the HTML tag. So I'll add like a data color equals whatever it happens to be, red or blue, based on whether it's checked or unchecked. Now when I do that, the variable itself will update from blue to red, and then everything in the entire site, because the HTML tag wraps everything, will then take on that hue color. And then finally, to make sure that when we load it, it actually does what we want it to do, which is to take on our last site setting, we're going to save it to local storage. Now, local storage, if you don't know, is in everybody's browser by default, and it's a key value storage system. So you give it a key, like color, and you give it a value like red, and then when we load the page each time, before we do anything, before we listen for a click change or anything like that, we're going to first check up front, hey, is there anything in the local storage that has this data color in it? If so, go ahead and update my variable to be whatever that happens to be. And then we'll obviously have a default as well if they haven't yet selected a custom color. All right, so that's kind of the basics of what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and do a couple things. First of all, we need to add a link to our JS file. So we don't yet have this, but if we do script src, we're going to set this at settings like this dot js. Now we do want to set this as a type of module, and this is important because it will actually help this load after the body so we have access to everything in the DOM, and it also has some other advantages. 
All right, so let's come to the sidebar over here, and let's just create that file, settings.js. Now, just to make sure this is working, let's console.log like hi or something, all right? And now if I come over here and open up my terminal or console right here, there you go, we get high. Okay, so we know that it's actually loading, which is important. You don't wanna do a ton of work and then <laughs> realize that nothing is working. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of capture the events themselves first. So if I jump back over to my diagram, the first thing we're gonna do is let's listen to this change. So let's do kind of these things one at a time. So I'm gonna to listen to the change, which means I need access to each of those items. So if I come down here, we're gonna look inside of the settings itself, this class of settings. We're gonna look for any inputs with type of checkbox. So let me jump back over here. Let's just call these toggles, say document.query selector, and we want to grab all of them. In this case, what I want to do is look inside my dot settings class, and then inside that, anything that is a type of checkbox. And you can do attribute selectors just like this. You do need to make sure you surround these in quotation marks as well. But since I've got the double quotes on the outside, I'll use the single quotes on the inside. Now, if I grab this right here, now we want to write, run an event listener on this. And maybe just to keep things separated properly, let's say selectors up here, just so we know what's going on. And then we'll say uh, event listeners. What we want to do is take our toggles and we want to loop over these. So we're going to say for each of them, we want to do one thing. So we'll grab our toggle. And I'm just going to do this as an arrow function. And for each toggle, I want to add an event listener. Now, what do I want to listen for? Well, I want to listen for a change event. So anytime it changes from checked to unchecked. Now, whenever it changes, the browser will actually pass along an event. So I can grab that event and name it whatever I want. I can name it pizza. I can name it John. It doesn't really matter, but typically you name this E or event, um, and that way it's consistent across your code. So when I get the event from the browser, I want to grab a couple things from it. So if I console.log, first of all, the e.target, or I could do current target too in this case, doesn't really matter. Uh, whenever I come in here and I click one of these things, I'm going to get uh, a, an, an input. So this is telling me this is the target of the thing that has changed. If I check it again, you'll notice that either way that works. Come down here, now I get the round one as well. So you can see all I'm trying to do is get the stuff from here. Now I want a couple things from here. I want the name attribute, so if it says round or motion, and then I also want whether or not it is checked. So we can do that in a couple different ways. I could come in here and say name equals e.target.name or whatever. But an easier way would just be to destructure these. So I can grab these off of that by saying name and checked like this and grab both of these off the e.target. Now, if I grab this and console log the name, then when I click here, it just is going to give me the name of motion. And same thing if I did checked as well. So now I'm going to get the status of whether or not it's checked and what the name is. So we've done the first thing we need to do. Let's now come back over here. We've listened for the change. Now we want to update the UI. And you might remember I've got a name for each of these things. So I know if it's like a motion or if it's a rounded or whatever. So I can update by adding a custom variable up top here. So let's come back over this way. And let's write a function that's going to be called up, update site UI. Now, before we do too much, let's come up top here. We'll write something like functions. And this will be function update site UI. Now, I want a couple things we, we want from whatever activates this function. First of all, I want a name, and then I also want a value. So I want to know what the name is and whether it's on or off or whatever it happens to be. Now, the reason I'm doing this inside of an object here is so that we can be a little bit more explicit when we call it. So if I don't do this inside of an object just like this, then the first thing I have to pass in has to be the name, the second thing has to be the value, and there's no real way of knowing it when I come down here. However, if I put this inside of an object, when I go to call this, if I hit control space, VS Code actually gives me IntelliSense to say, hey, there's two things you can pass this, a name or a value. And that's because these are the two object properties here. So I never have to mix these up. I can actually pass in, if I want to, the value first, and that's totally fine. And then the name, it doesn't really matter because I've labeled them explicitly. So let's go ahead and give it what it needs. So the name is going to be the name. So I could do name, name like this, but since it's the same in JavaScript, you can actually just shortcut like that. Then we also have the value, and this is going to be the checked status. So that will either be true or false. So let's come back up top here, and I'm just going to console.log the name and the value. And in fact, if I want to be extra fancy, I can wrap this inside of an object as well to get a little cleaner of a console log. So if I do this, now I get an object back with name motion and value is true. If I check it off again, you'll see now it's name motion and value is false. So I can use these then to update that data property. Now I want to do these both on the document itself. And just to make it a little bit easier, let's come up here and we're going to just grab it as a doc. This will be the document.document element, which is the same as essentially grabbing that HTML tag. That means I can come down here and just return doc 
and then I want to add a data attribute. You can do that a few different ways, but we're going to do data set, and then we're going to pass it the name in brackets and set this equal to the value. Now my prettier wraps this here in parentheses, but what I'm doing is saying, hey, I wanna add the data attribute of whatever it is that I passed in. Now, because we don't know what this is ahead of time, in order for it to be dynamic, I have to wrap it in these brackets, but it's the same as essentially saying like dot, you know, round or whatever. But because it's dynamic, I have to wrap it in those brackets. Then I'm just setting it equal to whatever the value happens to be. So now let's go ahead and save this. And if I come over here, let's look at this uh, HTML tag right here. If I check here, it should say data motion equals true. Motion is the name, value is true. Again, if I check it here, it should say false. Toggle round is true, toggle round is false. So what we've done kind of step two here, where we've updated the UI by updating the data tag. Now we actually need to filtrate this through with our CSS. So that's the next thing we're gonna do, and then finally we'll save it, save it to local storage. So let's come back over this way, and uh, let's go ahead and jump over to the CSS. Now up top here, I want to, below the root declaration and above the body, I want to declare a media query. Because what I want to do is respect people's motion sensitivity. So if somebody doesn't want motion, then I want to make sure that I respect that. So we're going to say reduce motion equals reduce. And this is just something that comes by default with CSS here. So I'm saying if they've selected they want reduced motion on their machine, I want to go ahead and on everything and on all the befores and on all the afters, basically take any animation or transition and all of that and set it to zero or nothing. Now, technically, you should probably do something that's like a little bit more minimal instead of just removing all motion, but just for simplicity's sake, this is what I'm going to do. And rather than you typing, watching me type all this out, you can just grab this from the repo or pause the video and type it out yourself. All right, so let's come down here. And the other thing we want to do is take account of our data attribute. So this is if they've already marked it on their system that they want to be reduced motion. The other thing I can do, though, is come in here and say data motion equals false. And if so, I want to grab everything inside of this. Or, as another option, I want to grab all the befores. Or finally, I want to grab all the afters. So any of those three things are the case. I want to do the same thing we declared up above. So I'll go ahead and remove this right here, just like that. Okay, so now, whenever I check this, if I set to true, everything should work. If it's set to false, and I come in here, now it should not have any motion. It goes real quick, just like that. And now that I think about it, I, this is not right. This should be prefers uh, reduced motion. Okay, so let's come back over this way and data motion, even if this is true or false, let's just get rid of this altogether. Right now it's snappy. If I come in here and hit Command Shift P and do prefers reduced motion, let's see right here. So I have enabled that. Now it should be real quick. So uh, this will work basically if they've set their system. If they toggled it to false, however, even if they have their motion on their system set to be active and working, then on this particular site, it will respect this. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. We've just updated the data, data attribute. Whenever this is motion data equals false, like this, then we're going to come in here, and this should not be quick. However, if I come in here and do uh, motion true, or if they don't have prefers reduced motion on their system, then I come in here and it should be just as snappy as you'd expect. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is rounding. Now, like I said, anytime we interact with the CSS, I'll let you know what we're doing. But up top here earlier, I showed you that we've got a round full and a round medium. Now, these are used all throughout the site. And right now, you can see that they're set to zero. Now, that's because by default, I don't want any rounding. But I want people to be able to toggle that on if they want to. So this is another way of working with CSS variables. So let's actually search for round uh, full. And you'll see we've got it on the headshot. And that's pretty much it. All right. So we'll have this in a couple other places eventually. If I search for round, what was it, medium? I've got it on the card. I've got it on the button. I've got it on a CTA input. So I've got this in a couple of different places. Now, whenever I add this round and I make it active, I want to override these variables with something else. So once again, I'm going to come down this way. We'll come just below those data attributes we set for motion. And I'm going to set another one called data round. And this one will be equal to true. Now inside here, I want to basically copy those exact same variables. So round of full, and this will be set to 100 V max. So as much as it can be rounded, I'll copy this down and this will be a round full medium. And that's not how you spell full either. So <laughs> there we go. And the medium will be just 0.5 rem. Okay, so now whenever I've toggled on this round, everything that's using either of these attributes should update because data round now equals true. So you can see if I toggle this on, now everything gets this rounded effect. This one's the most obvious since it's a full circle. And then if I uncheck it, now it should go back to the default because this is no longer being applied. So we can reduce the motion now. We can also reduce the rounding. 
Now, one of the reasons I did these checkbox, even though we're going to kind of overwrite how they look, is because if I come over here, I can tab to them and hit spacebar, and this is the kind of the default effect you'd expect for a switch, that you can hit spacebar. So we want it to be keyboard accessible, and I don't want to have to worry about handling all those keyboard events. So it's important to use the actual built-in browser inputs, and that way you get all those accessibility things by default. All right, so if we jump back over to our little diagram over here, we've listened for the change, we've updated the UI, and now we've used the CSS to propagate that variable all throughout our document. So let's go ahead and save to local storage as our final thing. So I'm going to come back over here to our settings, and right after we've basically sent this to update the UI, let's go ahead and also save this to local storage. So here we'll say local storage dot set item, and this is how you set that key value pair. In fact, if I come over here, I probably already have something in my local storage, but you can come on under application and then under whatever it is, and then it looks like I've got some stuff over here. But now when I come over here and toggle these, I want to set the item here of the name, which would be like motion or whatever, to whatever the status of checked is. So this will be true or false. So now if I come back over this way and I check this, you'll see now I get round is true, and here this would be uh, motion is true. Now what we're not going to yet do is update on load. So when we get to the page, we're not going to update this yet on load. We'll do that in a later video when we got all these things in and ready to go. But for now, we know that whenever we check these, it will actually update the UI and save something into our local storage. In the next video, we're going to work on the website theme. Here we'll have multiple different options, and whenever we select one, it should update the entire theme of the website based on our selection. So we've got like system or dark. We're just going to start with light, system, and dark for now, and we'll add the other specialty ones later on. Okay, I'll see you in lesson number four.